So one classic, classic, awesome example of uh, ellipses in the real world is the orbit of planets. Um, for the longest time, people thought that the orbits of heavenly bodies must be perfect circles. But uh, Johannes Kepler, to his chagrin, uh, was forced to acknowledge by his study um, of orbital data that the orbits were in fact um, ellipses. So, uh, so that was kind of a shocker. And uh, I wanted to just kind of go through um, uh, a simple exercise here where we um, come up with a, a, a simple formula for or an equation for the orbit of Pluto. Um, Pluto has a highly eccentric orbit. Uh, it's very, uh, very elliptical. Doesn't even closely resemble a circle. Uh, so I thought that'd be fun because it's, it's, it's um, has a fairly exaggerated orbit. I realize it's not a planet anymore, but you know that doesn't change the fact that it orbits the sun in uh, in an elliptical orbit. So yeah, let's just uh, write a little equation. I mean, this is this is simplified because, of course, the orbit of Pluto um, is affected by the gravitational forces of all the other um, the planets and all kinds of stuff. So, but you know, just a little. A simple example to show you how this works in the real world. So it turns out that the sun is one focus uh, of the elliptical orbit of, of Pluto and, and the planets. Um, and then, you know, there's nothing there at the other focus. Um, and so we can use some basic information about Pluto's orbit to write uh, an equation for its um, elliptical orbit. And that is its um, perihelion, the um, the closest it gets to the sun in its orbit, um, and its uh, aphelion, or aphelion, however you want to pronounce it, um, which is the the farthest it gets in its orbit. So um, this would be its perihelion, and this would be it's aphelion. Okay, so this is where it's farthest away from the sun. This is where it's closest to the sun. So see if we can start with that information and come up with an equation um, for its orbit. So uh, these are in um, astronomical units. Uh, one astronomical unit, one AU, is the distance from the Earth to the sun. Um, so when Pluto is closest to the sun, it's 30 times as far away from the sun as the Earth is, uh, you know, on average. And when it's farthest away from the sun, uh, its its distance is 49 times that uh, the 49 times the the average distance of the Earth to the sun. Okay, so there's a pretty drastic difference between when it's closest to the sun and when it's farthest from the sun. Okay, well, what we need to um, write the equation for the ellipse here is um, um, the. All right, we don't we don't actually need HK. We're we're gonna assume a coordinate system where the center is the origin. Um, so we're we're good on that front. We do need A and B. All right. So A is the distance um, from the vertex to the center, um, or we could say that 2a is the distance from um, from vertex to vertex. Okay, and, we, and then we need b, which is the uh, semi-minor axis here. And I've got a little formula that relates b to um, the perihelion and the aphelion. Okay, so let's just let's calculate A first. Well, what do we notice here? The perihelion plus the aphelion is equal to this entire distance, the major axis, and A is half of the major axis. So we can just add these two distances up, 30 AU plus 49. 
By the way, these these are rounded, but these are these are accurate numbers for Pluto. I mean, I'm not just making these numbers up. They are rounded for the sake of simplicity, but this is this is true. Uh, so what is that? 79. So the total distance between uh, when Pluto is closest to the sun and when it's farthest from the sun is 79 AU. So uh, a a would be half of that. Um, so what is that? So 39 and a half. So that's that's a. Okay, and we need b. Um, and b can be found by. Uh, taking the square root of the product of um, uh, the distance from the uh, this vertex to this focus um, and the distance from this ver uh, this focus to the farthest um, vertex. In other words, we can just take the square root of 30 times 49. So whatever that is, uh, 30 times 49 is 1470 uh, square root. Here we go. So about 38.3. Although I will just leave this as a square root. What was that? 17, 1470. Because in our formula, we want b squared, so b squared will just be 1470, right? So yeah, that's it. Um, so let's write our equation. So we've got x squared over a squared, so 39.5. Let's let's square that. Um, squared. It's about 1560. Let's call it 1560. Uh, plus y squared over uh, 1470. There, so that that would be an equation that would roughly describe the orbit of Pluto if we're assuming we're sort of looking down at the solar system and we're ignoring, you know, the minor changes in its orbit as it's affected by the gravity of, you know, Jupiter and etc. Um, this would be roughly, if you're looking straight down at its orbit, um, what the orbit would look like. Um, so if we were to graph this, that would be roughly what the orbit would look like. So there's an example of, of an ellipse in the real world. Um, the orbits of planets, the orbits of uh, almost planets like Pluto, um, um, etc. They follow this elliptical uh, orbit where the Sun is one of the foci of the ellipse.